Hello and welcome to Tech Deals hard drive to solid state drive clone video. This is a how to guide to move Windows 10 from a hard drive to a solid state drive without losing any data or your programs. Now I am going to be doing this today on this $720 Cyber Power PC. I have previously reviewed this computer, link to that in the video description below. If you've not seen it, please go check it out. For $720, this is the best value in a 1080p gaming machine on the market today. RX 480 graphics card, i5-7400 CPU, great power supply, great case, comes with all the various accompaniments. For the money, it's really, really hard to beat. The only deficiency I find with this machine is that it has a hard drive instead of a solid state drive. But almost every desktop computer in the $700 price range, at least in the first part of 2017 when I'm filming this, comes with a hard drive rather than SSD. So we need to put a solid state drive in, A data to the rescue. This is the ADATA SU900 256 gigabyte solid state drive, just under $100. This is an incredibly fast drive. How fast? Its random read and write speed is roughly equal to the Samsung 850 Evo. That's incredible. Very few solid state drives equal that spectacular drive, and this has done it. Over 30 megabytes per second, Q depth of one, 4K random read speed, which is actually the number that matters. And if you want more details on that, by the way, check out my Windows performance review, which will be in the full playlist when it gets published on this machine. I will talk about that in more detail. The long and short of it is, very fast drive and it will take the boot time from this machine from a minute to about oh, 10 or 15 seconds or so. Program load times will be instant. It's a really nice drive. Now, if you buy a solid state drive and this computer or a similar computer and you've never used it, the other option you have besides doing this cloning process is to simply put the SSD in, make a Windows 10 USB thumb drive for installation, do a clean install of Windows 10 onto the SSD, and not bother with the clone process. In fact, that's what I would do if I wasn't filming this for YouTube, because if I were to buy a machine like this, I would just put the SSD in, install Windows on it, and be done with it. It's actually faster to install Windows than it is to clone Windows. However, the cloning process is necessary if you've already used your machine and you've already got data programs, etc., and you don't want to have to set your computer up from scratch. That's the whole point, is to move Windows without having to reinstall anything. Now, I have done a how to do a clean Windows 10 install on my channel in the past. There will be a link to that in the video description below as well, but this is all about cloning. Now, in this video, I'm going to show you how to download, install, and run the clone software. It's provided free of charge by ADATA. You'll just go download it from their site. It's relatively quick and painless. And when we're done with that, we'll be back here for the end. Now, the first thing you need to do is download the True Image HD 2015 software from ADATA's website. And here you can see ADATA's website I've pulled up, and here's the downloads. Now, the True Image HD software is the automatic cloning software that will clone Windows from the hard drive to the SSD. They actually also provide um, a download of Macrom Reflect. However, it's not quite as automatic as the True Image HD. I'm going to show you the True Image HD software here because basically it's one click clone. Now, I would like to point out you should also download the SSD toolbox. Why? That is going to allow you to make sure that your firmware on your SSD is up to date and that everything is run cleanly and smoothly. It'll also give you a wear indicator to let you know how much life has been used, although for normal desktop users, you will never run the risk of running an SSD down, but it's a handy toolbox worth downloading and installing. I would like to note that the process of downloading and installing this does require registering your software and your SSD with ADATA. You have to create an account here. When you go click on the download software, you're taken to this page where you have to create an ADATA account and they're going to want the warranty code off of the drive itself. So be sure to write down the warranty code that's on your SSD before you put it in your computer. Now, I have already done all of this. Rather than wasting time, I simply took care of this before we started. Here, I have the software, and I have a text file with my true image key. I will click on the file, and yes, we want to run it, and yes, we want to install it. Once the actual clone process is complete, you will be able to uninstall this and free up space on your SSD, but you'll need to install it in order to do the clone itself. And it's successfully installed, so we'll click Start Application. 
Welcome to True Image HD 2015. Get started. And it wants you to sign in. I'm going to do this. We'll be back in a second. And here we go. I've put in my uh, username and password. I put in the serial code provided from the ADATA website. They will give you a serial code uh, to enter here. So that's the other reason you have to register. Even if you have the file and the program, you need a serial code. The only thing you have to click is clone disk. You don't need to use anything else here. We're going to click clone disk. Automatic. I recommend automatic mode. You can certainly do manual and play around with it, but this should work just fine. Now, the reason why there are three drives here is I actually have my external hard drive plugged in. This is the drive I use for all my testing. That's what disk three is. You won't see that. Instead, you'll just see these two. The source disk is going to be our one terabyte Western digital hard drive, and we'll hit next. And then for a destination, be sure to select your ADATA SU900 or SU800 if you have one, that's still a good drive as well. The destination you've chosen contains partitions. Yes, it does, because I've actually used this drive in another machine. That's fine. Now, if you've never put your drive in a machine before, that message won't come up. But I've actually used this in something else, which is why that happened. All right, the before, unallocated on this drive. Now, I know it says unallocated, but the, it's actually been initialized in another machine. And then the after is going to be here. That's our C drive. And then the two small hidden partitions, which have to be there. At this point, we're going to hit proceed. Computer restart is required. And at this point, we're going to hit restart, and it's going to boot into a special mode that will clone Windows offline. We'll hit restart, and now the computer will reset. When your system reboots, you will need to press the F11 key to go into the boot menu just as it's restarting. Otherwise, it will actually just boot into Windows, and that is because the Windows bootloader takes priority over everything. Pardon the green screen, this is an artifact of the Elgato HD60 Pro Capture Card. It doesn't like anything but Windows, unfortunately, so it does this. In any case, you want to come down to the Acronis Loader. That's what you need to run in order to do the actual cloning process. If you don't press F11 and come down here, then it will just boot into Windows and nothing will happen. So press Enter there, and it's now going to run the bootloader. At this point, it is now preparing the actual clone process. Again, pardon the bad colors. This is an artifact of my capture card, which works very well some of the time and marginally some other times. I'm currently looking for another solution for capture cards because the uh, this one is not my favorite, but it works well enough. In Windows, the colors are correct, but anything anytime I try to do BIOS recording or any type of bootloader recording, the colors are wrong. Go figure. It is worth noting that automatically checked is the shut down the computer when operation is completed. Why is this? Because you're going to need to make an additional step in order to have the computer actually boot from the SSD. Now there's several ways to go about this depending upon what you want to accomplish. If you're taking the hard drive out of the computer, then just do that. When the machine shuts down, physically remove the hard drive, the computer will boot to the SSD without a problem. But because it's cloned, if you just leave it in, the computer will still boot to the hard drive. You need to do one of two things. You either need to physically switch the cables, meaning physically switch which ports on the motherboard the hard drive and the SSD are plugged into in order to get the SSD into port SATA port either 1 or 0 depending upon the board, the first one, and have it initialized first. The other thing you can do rather than switch the ports is go into the BIOS by pressing the delete or the F2 key when the system is booting and then dynamically reorder the ports in the BIOS. Now, even though this is a pre-built machine, this is a CyberPower PC, it's still a custom build. This has an MSI B250 Bazooka motherboard. You can buy those off of Amazon for less than $100. It is a standard off-the-shelf motherboard with a standard BIOS that gives you full control over your system. This is not true if you buy an Acer or a Dell or an HP. Those usually have completely locked down BIOSes, and you can't do that. In fact, if you watch my um, SSD cloning video on my Acer Aspire T desktop, you don't have that option. In fact, this won't work at all. You either have to manually clone using Macrum Reflect, which I'm not going to video because I think the process is beyond what most people want to mess with, or do a clean install, or use a Samsung 850 Evo, which uses proprietary cloning software that does the clone in Windows and actually works absolutely perfectly. 
However, not everybody wants to buy a Samsung. They tend to cost a bit more. This A-Data drive is just as fast. The SU900 is just as fast as that 850 Evo and often costs less, or at least it did at the time that I did the initial review. I actually haven't looked at it in about a week or so. SSD prices change often, so by all means, price shop. Um, the SU900, the Crucial MX300, the... Uh, Samsung 850 Evo are all very similar in performance. I would use any of those three drives. Incidentally, what you're watching here is the exact same software that Crucial provides with their MX300. So if you buy an MX300 instead of an A-Data drive, this is exactly the same process you'll go through. It's the Samsung which has a different cloning software and you can see that on my Acer Aspire T $450 desktop computer review. They're all fine. Uh, frankly, the drives are pretty much interchangeable when it comes to performance. I don't have any issues with any of them. It is worth noting, incidentally, that's not true of all SSDs. There are some SSDs out there I would not recommend, but those I definitely would. The other one I would put in that category in terms of speed now that I think about it, it's a slightly older drive, but the SanDisk Ultra 2 is actually almost equal to the 850 Evo in performance. Uh, it'll do nearly 33 megabytes per second, uh, 4K random read, Q depth of one, thread of one, which most SSDs actually won't do. And here we are, look at that. I didn't trim, well, I might've trimmed a few bits out of that when I wasn't talking, but that was really, really quick. Now the machine's gonna shut down and we're going to reorder the drives. I have turned the computer back on and I pressed the delete key to get into the system BIOS before Windows actually booted up. Now I did not reorder the ports, you can't. And if you do that, that certainly will work. But I wanna show you this process in case you don't wanna open the computer back up. Now we're on the system status page. Again, apologies for the green, that's my capture card. It won't look green on your side. If you actually do this, you have the monitor plugged directly in, it will be normal black and white and normal colors. Notice that the A-Data SU900 is plugged into port 3. The hard drive is plugged into port 2, and interestingly enough, CyberPower put the DVD drive in port 1. It doesn't matter. Now, the A-Data will not boot to Windows because it's after the hard drive, and they both have the Windows bootloader on them. You can physically switch these ports on the motherboard, but let me show you an easier way. We are gonna come over to the boot screen. And if you look at the boot screen, full screen logo, you can see everything. Don't worry about any of this. All that really matters, fixed boot priority. We are currently selected the Windows Boot Manager on the Western Digital Corporation one terabyte drive. If you look down the list, you'll see there's no other Windows Boot Managers to choose from. There's no other way to boot, is there? No, nope, wait, don't worry, there is. Press escape, come down here, to UEFI hard disk drive boot priorities. Select that and you're gonna see two options available. Boot option number one is currently selected to the Western Digital Drive. Watch this. Now it's not. That's it. That's the only change you have to make. It really, I took more time to get in here and talk about it than it does to show it. Come over to boot, come down here to, to UEFI hard disk drive priorities and simply select the A data drive. It's now going to boot to your SSD. No need to reorder the cables. This right here is what is missing in the large tier one OEM PCs. Acer, Asus, uh, sadly Asus pre-built usually don't have this. They should considering it's Asus, but they don't. Um, HP, Dell's, Lenovo's are usually missing this choice. This is what was missing from the Acer Aspire T $450 desktop in case you watched that video. This drive was originally installed in that machine and the lack of this made me move it over here. So at this point, we need to come over to save changes and reboot, save configuration and reset. And here we are booting up. Again, green because my capture card, don't worry about it, it'll be normal once Windows gets there. Quick side note, I'm not cutting any time from this boot. It really is 15 seconds from the reboot to the Windows desktop. Wow, that was a whole lot faster. Holy smokes. Okay, the difference between the hard drive and the SSD is night and day. Opening up Task Manager, coming over here, 
disk C where Windows is, is now the ADATA SU900. Notice that disk 0 is disk E, that's the hard drive. This is because Windows knows what order they're plugged into the motherboard, and so it still puts disk O and disk E up there, but it doesn't matter. Your C drive and Windows is now running off the SU900. This is monumental. That, that boot took less than 15 seconds. It takes a minute or so on the hard drive. So SSD successfully installed, but wait, we're not done yet. Let's open up Windows File Explorer and come to this PC. Now we have the C drive, which is our solid state drive that has Windows and our programs and files, and we are now good to go. You will notice that we have 204 of 237 gigabytes free. Over Now D is our DVD drive, and then E is our hard drive. So we still have our one terabyte drive installed, Notice that we have a little less than 900 of 930 gigabytes free. That's because Windows is still on your hard drive. You need to get rid of this. Don't just select this and delete it. We want to format that drive. Ignore the fact that there is another drive. That's my external utility drive. That has all my programs and files that I use for working on machines. You won't have that unless you have a USB drive plugged in. So what we want to do is we want to right click on local disk E and choose format. Leave everything at the default and hit start. Yes. Drive is in use. Yes, we want to format it. Format's complete. Close. There's now nothing on our E drive. Not to worry, Windows is still here because Windows is on our C drive. The cloning software is simple and straightforward. It really is this easy to use. There we go. So you have your one terabyte drive available for large games or videos or music files, things that don't need an SSD. And you have your solid state drive for wicked fast boot performance and super fast application and web browsing loading time. One last thing, you can now uninstall the true image software if you'd like. Right click on your start button, choose programs and features, and there's the true image software right there up front. Simply click uninstall, say yes, and this will remove that program freeing up a little bit more drive space. And there's the program uninstalling. And it does want you to restart in order to complete that. I'll restart in just a second. This concludes the hard drive to solid state drive clone process for the $720 CyberPower PC. Like this video if you like it, share it with your friends if you loved it. Remember to subscribe to my channel with that big huge red button directly below the video questions and comments in the comment section. And as always, check out the links in my video description, the link to amazon.com where I bought this machine and where this SSD will be linked will be down in that description below. If you found this video helpful and useful and you decide to buy either of these, please use my links. The link to my full playlist on this computer will be down there as well, as well as the link to my Patreon account. Do you find this how-to or or step-by-step -step process video helpful and useful? Do you want to see more of them? Do you like the game performance videos and unboxing videos and reviews that I do? Please consider supporting me. I would greatly appreciate it. And every dollar from Patreon goes right back into the channel to fund purchases such as this, to make more of these videos that I hope are helpful and entertaining for you. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in my next video.